Hi, Blue Bard here and welcome to the Mythoscope, the place to re-enjoy everything mythical. Let's see what our topic is going to be today. Greece and races. The Amazons, who um, look like Romans. Yeah, I'm not redrawing that. The term Amazon brings forth many Im images for the average listener. No, no, not that. I, I mean, I mean, Amazon warriors brings forth many images for the average listen. Okay, no, not that either. Oh, okay, can we start again? No, no, I'm still not redrawing that. Greek mythology is vast, and I mean it. It has been studied and analyzed for so long, it overshadows most other cultures' mythology with ease. But a returning theme in most of their stories are in fact Amazons. So who were these women? They were a race of warrior women who were said to be descendants of Eris, the god of war. According to the stories, they lived in many different places, from Libya to the far edges of Russia to the center of the Black Sea. They were excellent archers, and there are stories saying that these women were the first to break and train horses. I love them already. So, if we picture them in ancient Greece, they would then have looked more like this instead of this or this. A very well-known theory about the Amazons is that they cut off their right breast to be more adept with the bow. This has been proven to be false and invented in the 5th century by Greek scholars who may have felt that Greek women had to give up some of their femininity to be like a man. According to the mythology, they were powerful, intelligent, fierce fighters and had their own culture. An odd one, but a culture nonetheless. The stories say that they lived far away from men and only invited them into their home to produce children, after which the men were killed and all male-born infants were also killed. At the same time, there's another story which claims that the men lived among the women and took on the role of housewife and shopkeeper, while the women in turn ran the city and made war. Obviously. Despite all these facts, historians are generally split over what is true and what is not. As a rule, there isn't a clear, concise idea of who these women were, where they came from, if they existed, and even what the name Amazon really means. That's right, people, they can't even decide on the name. There are generally three theories. The first is it means no wheat, playing on the idea that these women only ever ate meat and never had grain foods. Another idea is it could mean warrior, for, well, obvious reasons, and finally that it could mean breast due to their self-mutilations. However, this theory has been debunked, so the chances that it means that is very slim. But were these women real? Many evidence seems to point to yes. In graves surrounding the Black Sea, they found large burial sites. These skeletons were tested and they found that about 20 to 30% of them were in fact women who were not only buried with their weapons but also had battle scars. Slavic has an old folk tale about tall warrior women who hated men and even Alexander had a run-in with an Amazon queen. And finally, in Greek antiquity, there are over 1,000 pieces of art all depicting these women in battle. So there certainly is some very strong evidence to suggest that they may have existed. But now we need to ask ourselves the next question. How did such a culture come into being? The story of the Amazon makes an interesting parallel to the Greek's culture. In ancient Greece, women had very few rights and were generally treated as objects. They were only ever considered married when they produced a child for their husband, and only if he decided to keep said child. The boys were usually kept, but the girls were what they called exposed, which meant taking her to the top of the mountain and leaving her there, so the gods could decide her fate. Did women revolt against men? It's possible, but we need to take everything into consideration. In general, these women were pampered and given everything they could desire, and they even had perfume bottles depicting Amazon warriors for personal use. Perhaps the women in Greece were allowed to admire these fighters and even aspire to them? Another theory proclaims that in a single war, most of the men had been murdered, and the women, fending for themselves, took on the mantle of protector. 
and it just sort of stayed that way. The speculations, of course, are endless, but it still offers a very interesting concept. The Amazons are a perfect opposite representation of what the man's position was in ancient Greece. But they are very prominent in stories, to a point. In most stories where the Amazons are present, they are usually defeated by the hero. Hercules, Bellerophon, and so forth. Some have theorized that this is because the Greeks, being a patriotic culture, did not appreciate the idea of a woman doing a man's job, and thus in all their stories they made sure to put the woman in their place. The theories surrounding these femme fatales are endless, and they will be debated for many, many years to come. It's a fascinating subject in itself, and a fun one to discuss, and besides, a race of warrior women riding horses and shooting people with bows? Where can you get more epic than that? Thanks for watching, guys.